stage of the London Palladium, here's your host, Jimmy Tarbuck. very much. Thank you. Hello and hello at home and welcome to a special evening for me and it's Laughs from the Palladium where we take you back over the last season or so when we had a lot of fun, especially like this just coming before Christmas. You all getting ready for Christmas here in the audience in the theatre? Yes. We've got a Christmas uh, message, a serious one from our Prime Minister, from Dear Maggie and she says, Christmas comes but once a year and when it comes it's handy. I'd make you all a Christmas pud, but Dennis is Nick the Brandy. <laughs> Maggie's given, no, 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 she's given Dennis a great gift for Christmas, longer drinking hours, and um, <laughs> she asked Neil Kinnock, she said, Neil, what would you like for Christmas? He said, well, Prime Minister, he said, I, I'd like to share power. So she bought him an adapter and a three-pin plug, and uh, <laughs> then she phoned Reagan in America, she said, Mr. President, what would you like for Christmas? He went, whoa, whoa, whoa uh, well, I'd like the respect of my fellow world leaders. She said, yes, what's your next choice? And, uh, <laughs> I mean, I've had some very interesting gifts myself and really nice things. I've had a matching tie and underpants set, and, uh... <laughs> Would you wear that? A pen with a lifetime guarantee, and two refills, and, um... <laughs> I mean, I love Christmas, like hanging the lights on the tree. Do you all remember trees? <laughs> I mean, it's not the same, is it? Stringing tinsel over a bag of logs. I mean, just not the same. <laughs> I've sent Des O'Connor some baby clothes. You know, the baby looks like him. Still, as long as it's healthy, and, uh... <laughs> Actually, they are baby co clothes. They were Ronnie Corbett's cast off, and, uh... <laughs> little Ronnie, he sent me a bottle of whiskey. It was a miniature, and, uh... <laughs> Jimmy Cricket sent me some Irish whiskey. It was gin. And, uh, <laughs> There's some great dolls around for all the kids. There's the Coldstream Guards doll. You wind it up and it bullies Action Man, and, uh... <laughs> then there's the Boy George doll. That wears Cindy's clothes, and, um... <laughs> But I love the office parties, don't you? Oh, I went to a cracker while I'm in, you all eat too much, drink too much. You get behind the filing cabinet with some little typist, and then some Burke always says, Oi, you don't work here. <laughs> I went to a gay 90s party the other night, it was wonderful. The guys were gay and the birds were 90. And, uh... <laughs> this is a special night for me because it brings back lots of memories of fun and laughter and live from the Palladium. And uh, here's one of those moments featuring someone whose dog spit while he was going much before spitting image. He's a great guy from Birmingham with his favorite pal, Bob Carroll G's and his dog spit. And here he is, my little dog spit. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, love, just rub it in. Good shot. I'm here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, to talk to you about my latest research into animal behaviour. I've come up with a bit of a breakthrough here, ladies and gentlemen, with animals and their behaviour, because I've discovered that, uh, that hypnotism and animals is, uh, go together. You can actually train your animals with hypnotism. I'd just like to demonstrate. For instance, you see, my lad here, he has always been fascinated and wanted to do a balancing act. <laughs> what happens where every time he's tried a balancing act, I'll show you things fall off, which is not very good when you've got a balancing act. So, I've discovered that hypnotism actually puts pay to that, and I'd like to demonstrate for you tonight. Uh, it doesn't take long to go under, because obviously he's done this many, many times with me, <laughs> and uh, it just takes him no time at all, and he's, uh, he's there. And there we are, he's actually gone now, ladies and gentlemen. You'll notice that his eyes do glaze over a bit, and he tends to stare into space, but uh, that's quite normal, it's nothing to worry about. Um, <laughs> it's just one of the things that animals actually do. To bring him round, to bring him round from the hypnosis, all I have to do is say his name. Spit. <laughs> do you remember anything? No. You're under hypnosis. I'll put him under again, ladies and gentlemen. This time, secretly taking his temperature at the same time. <laughs> there we are. He has, in fact, gone. I can make him do anything now, ladies and gentlemen. I can make him do and Im imitate anything. But be a... Uh, you are a... Wristwatch. <laughs> a clock. <laughs> a big clock. <laughs> What's that? A stopwatch. 
Back to the balancing. We'll see what happens now he's under the power of hypnosis, ladies and gentlemen. With the tennis racket once more. A perfectly balanced <laughs> tennis racket. An umbrella, a very difficult object to balance, ladies and gentlemen. On his nose. Here we go. Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> there we are. He can stay in this position for as long as he wants, ladies and gentlemen. It makes no difference at all. So just stay there until I tell him to let go. A clothes peg, ladies and gentlemen. What a difficult object. A clothes peg. Here we are. <laughs> Don't. What could be harder? not, it's a balloon. What can be harder <laughs> than a balloon? Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. What about that, ladies and gentlemen? A perfectly balanced balloon. <laughs> impressive. Eh? It is very, very impressive. <laughs> the hardest thing of all, ladies and gentlemen, is a moon boot. Because, <laughs> because of the size and shape, a moon boot is almost impossible to balance. We'll just see what happens here, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, my lad here, he's going to balance. Not one, give us an ooh. <laughs> Not two, give us an ah. <laughs> Not three, say gasp. <laughs> but four cups and saucers, ladies and gentlemen, say impossible. <laughs> it was a rehearsal. <laughs> four cups and saucers, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go, on his nose. <laughs> Good boy, Spit. <laughs> well, you know, it's always great for me to see young comics getting a chance to show off their talents on TV, and of course, especially on the Palladium. It's a very, very special theatre, this. And uh, we got gales of laughter from fresh funny men. Their chance came here on several shows, and here's three young comedians, and there's certainly, you're gonna see a lot more of the three of them. Billy Pierce, Dave Lee, and Mark Walker. Watch these three, they're great. Hello. <laughs> Do you know, I'm sure my eyesight's going. <laughs> I keep running into pubs. <laughs> <clears throat> Scottish couple staying in a hotel, bed and breakfast. And she died in the night, and he rang down and cancelled the breakfast. <laughs> <clears throat> I love Scottish people. They get up in the morning, look under the bed, see if they've lost any sleep. <laughs> I'll keep going till I find out what you like. This side. What do you call a dog with no legs? No matter what you call it, it won't come. <laughs> Did you hear about the Irish dog? It tried to make love to a cabbage. I thought it were a collie. <laughs> this side's better. Oh, that's good. Try to look at all <laughs> Why have seagulls got big strong wings? So they get to the rubbish chip before the gypsies? <laughs> <laughs> have you noticed the difference between a fella and a lady when they go shopping? We, what we do, fellas, when we go shopping, we know what we're going to buy, don't we, fellas? Yeah. Bless your hearts, ladies, you're slightly different. You go to that first shop and see exactly what you want, then you go to another 47 shops. <laughs> <laughs> then you work your way back. <laughs> the first thing you saw anyway, don't you? <laughs> well, I mean, none of this. Sunday tomorrow, I've got to buy all the food. I'll get one of them little chickens, £1.19p. Beautiful. <laughs> I thought there'd be plenty for the eight of us. <laughs> and we'll have sandwiches in the evening. <laughs> and I can make soup on Monday morning. So I said, <laughs> all on my own, all of a sudden, I heard the rattle of an alien trolley behind me. And this geezer only tried to overtake, didn't he? I thought, oh, no, you don't. So I accelerated, so did he. It got stupid. We were doing about 150 mile an hour. <laughs> I would smell his rubber wheels melt with friction. I thought, how will I lose him? I reached for a prune yoghurt. I thought, this will get him going. 
I threw it over my shoulder, it burst on impact. He ran into a big pile of prune and lost control. <laughs> Smashing the back of my legs 150 mile an hour. <laughs> I went, oh, flip. <laughs> and he did it again. He went out of the way, fatty, and my bottom lip went. <laughs> I said, what'd you call me? He said, fatty. I said, I don't like being called fatty. He went, fatty, fatty, fatty. <laughs> I said, you want to watch it? That's fighting talk where I come from. He said, why aren't you fighting? I said, I moved years ago. <laughs> he said, you're repulsive. I said, what do you mean? He said, look at that stomach. I said, what's wrong with it? He said, do you realise if that was not a woman, she'd be pregnant? I said, it has been, and she is. <laughs> right, right, hello, everybody. It's me, Billy Connolly, the big yen, right? <laughs> There's been a lot of boxing on the television, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, my favourite story is about the boxer who called his trainer over. He said, over, come here. He said, <laughs> he said I want to fight somebody. Sonny Liston, phone him up. He said, what? He said, phone Sonny, get him on the phone, I want to fight him. He said, Sonny's dead. He said, well, Rocky Marciano, phone him. He said, he's dead as well. He said, he said what about Muhammad Ali? He said, he doesn't fight no more. He said, what about Joe Bignell? He said, you are Joe Bigner, you stupid mug, you. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd like to introduce you right now to one of my favorite singers. Yeah, he's great. I'd like to introduce you to the weird and wonderful, the one and only Mr. Michael Jackson. Here we go. personal favourite. He's unique, he's irreverent, very, very original, but most important, very, very funny. Please welcome a great guy, Richard Digence. Thank you very much. Oh, it's very nice to be here. I was going to sing a song, but I ain't now. It's good, wasn't it? <laughs> if I sang after that, I'd go down out a French kiss at a family reunion, I would. Anyway. <laughs> Last time I was working with Jimmy was um, live at the Piccadilly, and it was a Sunday. I shall never forget, really. There was, well, there was someone on the South Bank show I'd heard of. That's how I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember Sunday night at the London Palladium? Yeah. We were all kids. Do you remember the tune? Go on in. Da 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 da. Let's see what else you remember from school days. Who remembers scooters? I don't mean vroom, vroom, vroom. Not them scooters, but them ones. <laughs> Remember them? Don't see them no more. What colour were they? Yeah. That's right. Wheels? Yeah, two. That's right. Well done. <laughs> yeah, was. And they was called Mobos. Do you remember? And they had that stupid brake on the back you could never find before you split your head open on a wall. <laughs> and if you found the brake, you'd lost all your equilibrium, so you was done anyway, wasn't it? <laughs> And what about three-wheeler bikes with a boot on the back you put stones in? <laughs> now, girls, they remember other things to uh, us boys from the sort of school tuck shop, because girls used to buy different things. They used to buy love arts. <laughs> and then, like, messages like, I love you and my dearest. <laughs> well, in East Ham, they used to have different messages, but that's not real, there. <clears throat> and the other things girls used to buy were those horrible Palmer violets. <laughs> and, like little lavender bricks, do you remember? And you had to eat them. They tasted like cheap Avon perfume, but you had... <laughs> no, but you had to eat them, because the girl who was giving you one, you know, would... No, steady, steady. <laughs> I mean, stop it. The girl who was giving you one was the girl you wanted to go out with, you know, so you had to sort of eat it, otherwise she'd pack you up. <laughs> who remembers what a rip-off jamboree bags were? 
And what about when wagon wheels fitted wagons? <laughs> Even dinky toys now, isn't it? Imps is another thing I remember from school. Do you remember those they were little black pillars, weren't they? Do you remember imps? One of them used to burn your head off. <laughs> we used to have a real little wimp in our class and we used to make me eat a box at lunchtime. <laughs> and what about having a packet of crisps in the pictures and eating the salt by mistake? <laughs> and you had to chat up your new girlfriend and you couldn't kiss her because all your mouth had gone all right <laughs> and all the salt around your lips and you couldn't feel your own tongue, let alone hers. Do you remember that? <laughs> Do you remember when Brian Clough was a, was a football car that no one had heard of? <laughs> Want to swap Jimmy Greaves? Who for? Brian Clough. <laughs> anyway, if any of that means anything to you, I'm going to do a little song for you now. Uh, I'm glad you've cheered me up tonight, because uh, I wrote a song for Turkey. <laughs> Here's a little song that I'm entering for next year's Eurovision Song Contest, so it'll sound a bit off-key, but we'll do what we can. Uh, it's called I Still Remember. Gone quiet. <laughs> I remember all my adolescent days, and that's going back a few years now. There was quite a mass and journey into space, their voices still ring loud and clear somehow. The eagle and blackjacks and everlasting strips, things I read like biggles and newspapers round my chips. National health, orange juice, birthday ten bob notes, idiot mittens with the strings around our throats. <laughs> Do you remember idiot mittens? Do you remember trying to wipe your nose with one and getting smacked in the mouth with the other one? <laughs> I think West Ham's goalkeeper still wears them. <laughs> it's not funny, they're my team. <laughs> Saturday morning picture shows. How we whistled when the film broke down. Frozen jubblies, flying saucers, licorice wood. And led soldiers in a box for half a crown. Having friends to tea, but never in the week. Trying to ask a girl out, but forgetting how to speak. Roy of the Rovers in his red and yellow trim. I remember Jimmy Tarbuck. What on earth became of him? <laughs> now look, we're going to go into the commercials now, so keep clapping until we've gone, otherwise it's going to be very embarrassing, all right? See you later. Enjoy the show. The Reverend and Superb Richard Tigers. He really is one of my favourites. Well, I hope you're all having uh, fun in here tonight. At home, we've got lots of Christmas cards. I've got a cracker here from Michael Fish and all at the Weather Centre. This is really nice. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire, Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Happy Easter. <laughs> we'll see you in a couple of minutes. We're going to take the break. Thank you, Alan. After the break, more comedy with Injun Waggett, Brian Connolly and Frank Carson. <laughs> My true love sent to me. Do 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 do. Eight ba 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 to win a thousand pounds. Play spot the difference to win five thousand pounds. Win a romantic holiday in Portugal. With me. Win sensational skiing holidays. They're free. The 12 days of Christmas in the sun. Win 50 Christmas hampers. Win a whopping turkey. Win to Undy Land. Win racy laces. Win Hamley's toys. Win Raleigh bikes. And win this fantastic festive Ford Fiesta. It's the 12 days of Christmas in the sun. It's going to be the happiest Christmas in the sun ever. 
once heard about Anchor Butter, well, here's a story about a mother. Saucepan Anchor is the name. Tastes like butter, just the same. It's hot, but Anchor is brand new. It's low in fat, so it's good for you. Martini Extra Dry. Have it with or without. With friends. With pleasure. Martini Extra Dry. It's there to be discovered. If you've got a room that's full of frost, do not worry, all is not lost. We've got a solution at not much cost. When you want to get gas, get colour. Yeah, welcome back to this wonderful Palladium Theatre. You know, they say variety is the spice of life. And there's no spicier couple than these two grand ladies who gave us all a grand time one night here at the Palladium. Who else? The superb Hinge and Bracket. Well, James, I must say it makes a change from all that rock and roll. It certainly it? does. Bottoms up. Oh, I do hope so. It's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must tell you, my dear ladies, I love that song. Definitely my style of music. Oh, bless you. Made of the mountains, you yes. know. And you know, James, we had a great success with that song many years ago when we were entertaining the troops in Cyprus. Mm. 54, do you remember that in Africa? I shall never forget it. What a tour that was. 12 months solid of one night stands. Oh, it must have. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it must have been hard for all those boys. Okay. <laughs> well, we did our best, you know. <laughs> Because when the two of us arrived, the boys fell on us. Yes, yes. all of them, yes. And the well, look of relief on their faces. Well, I mean, it can't have been easy. I mean, putting up those stages for you, you know, to work on. And, and I suppose you performed every night, did you? Indeed we, we did, did yes. <laughs> Everywhere, yes, of course. The trouble was in Cyprus, you see. I always felt in Cyprus the boys didn't have the equipment to deal with us, really. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yes, well, Just, you know, they were young, didn't know how to use it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there they are. Hinge and bracket. Well, I hope you all get your presents through the post office and everything. I mean, the way they handle parcels is quite disgraceful, I think. Last year, I mean, I bought my niece a cabbage patch doll. By the time it arrived, it was coleslaw. <laughs> and when, uh, when I first saw this young man do his act, I knew right away he was going places, and so he did right into his own TV series. He's zany, he's unpredictable, he's very funny. Brian Connolly. I am the very model of a modern major general. I've information badges for the land of rule. I know the kings of England and I quite the fight story. Call from Matha to Waterloo with all the kind of comics all. All together now. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. You know it. <laughs> About this one. Kiora, Kiora. That my favourite advert used to be that little kid used to come out the Heinz baked beans, remember? My mum, she gives me Heinz baked beans. I think she's very smart. <laughs> no, you won't do that one, no. So I do apologise, thank you very much, sir. You're not the Muppets, are you? <laughs> Did you know Prince Charles cannot lift that arm? Do you know why? Because it's mine. <laughs> and now, quick impression now, here we go. Impression now of the Irish Spot the Ball competition. Right, I want you to picture the scene. I want you to picture the scene. This fella had been in the SAS for five years. He's like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, someone walked on then, you know. <laughs> and he went home, like, and his mum said, oh, oh, come here, give us a big kiss. He said, I don't want to kiss you, mum, because I'm a man. I'm in the S-A-S. <laughs> She said, well, I made you something to eat. She said, I don't want nothing to eat, man, because when I was in the jungle, I was eating things that you wouldn't even tread on. You know what I mean, Harry? <laughs> he said, well, how about a cup of tea? He said, I don't want nothing, mum. I'm going out. And five minutes later, he was back. He said, what's up? He went, I fell over. <laughs> Thank you. Woo. Beautiful song now, dedicated to my first true love because about two years ago when I was on holiday in Spain, I met a young lady there and well, we fell madly and passionately in love with each other. So much so that she came over to England to live with me and well, as you can imagine, we got on really well for the first six months. Until one day I looked at her and it suddenly dawned on me that she was a right ugly cow. <laughs> she was stupid. She was really stupid. She thought mow the grass was a Jewish informer. <laughs> she thought Zulu was a toilet in Regent's Park. <laughs> and that was the last I ever saw of her because she ran away with the circus. But the police found her and made her take it back. <laughs> Beautiful song that I once had the privilege of singing with a great Tom Jones. He was on the radio and I was in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Shut up! <laughs> oh, so sorry, Mike. Sorry, sorry. Oh, my ass will be in the papers tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, famous, oh my God. <laughs> anyway, the beautiful song. The song, please, the song. Sorry, Tom, sorry. <laughs> I forgot where I am now. <laughs> right, please, please. <laughs> I believe that children are our future. Just and well and let them be. <laughs> Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. <laughs> Let them say, Shut the kid out! <laughs> Remind us how we used to be the greatest love of all is easy to achieve. Let is the greatest love of <laughs> Good night, God bless you. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. He's a bright man with a very, very big future, and we didn't charge him for the microphone. Well, you know, here's a man who's perfected the art of stand-up comedy. Like no other comic in our business. When he's at his best, he's a real powerhouse. And he certainly was one night with us here at the Palladium stage. And of course, you know why. It's the way he tells them. Frank Carson. Well, nice to see an audience starved of talent. <laughs> Who's drink and drive, Jim? Spills in your lap. <laughs> oh, it's marvelous. The taxi driver brought me here with a brilliant. He says, I can't believe it. Frank Carson in my car. Marvellous, he said. You're my favourite comedian. I'd like an autograph. I'll buy you a drink. I said, that's marvellous. He said, there's my card. Just ring it up and ask for crazy hurry. <laughs> <laughs> that never gets a laugh anyway. I don't know what the hell it's hell about. <laughs> I had the wife. Just come back from Hawaii. I had the wife in the hotel, you see, and uh, well, she's absolutely marvellous. And then I went away off. And, you know, I was so lonely. And I rang her up and I said, this is dreadful. I said, I just feel I'd love to have you here beside me and hold you and kiss you and cuddle you. And she said, who's that speaking? Because <laughs> you have to work at your marriage. We do. You know, we go out twice a week. You know, a nice little candlelit dinner, nice little steak, glass of wine. She goes on a Tuesday, I go on a Thursday. <laughs> I actually caught a fella in bed with her. 
I said to him, who told you you could make love to my wife? He said, everybody. <laughs> and in this bar in Hawaii, I must tell you, it was a beautiful big American girl, and I was chatting her up. I said, uh, you sure look a beautiful woman. I, I said, you're lovely long hair and a beautiful dress. She says, well, you're, you're such a nice man, you know, coming from the uh, United Kingdom, you're nice. I said, yeah. I said, would you care for a drink? She said, yes, I'll have a large Napoleon brandy and a glass of champagne, I guess. <laughs> I said, guess again. <laughs> and now, and now in the, uh, thank you. They have a psychiatrist in these places, you know. And there was a fellow fan about the corridor going, beep, 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 beep. And I said, I said, what's wrong with that crackpot? <laughs> he said, he thinks he's a new Cadillac. I said, why didn't you tell him he's not? He said, are you mad? I got $70 a week for servicing him. <laughs> I said, I wouldn't like to change his oil. <laughs> then we got a problem at home. I got my grandson scratching his head with his cap on. I says, what are you doing that for? He says, well, I don't take my charger. That's enough of that. <laughs> well, not a song. Which is especially written for me by Paul McCartney's wife, Charlotte. Now, not that Paul McCartney. This is the one from Accrington. <laughs> now, because the words are a bit naughty, what I'll do is I'm going to sing the words which are not naughty and then to say, give us a chord in L. <laughs> Don't give up your day job. <laughs> when you and I. Well, now, this song is called the Jimmy Brown song or the three bells. I want you, the members of the audience, to be the bells. So when I drop my hand, I want you all to go boing. <laughs> all together now, all together, because there are people in Ireland watching this on radio. <laughs> boing. All together now. Boing. There is a village. Boing. Called Donna Cloney. Boing. In Northern Ireland, where skies are grey, boing. It's the only place in the United Kingdom, boing, that doesn't have a Chinese takeaway, boing. <laughs> the tourist board they wrote the gym will fix it, boing. And hope one day their scheme would come to pass, boing. And mysteriously, on the corner there was a Taj Mahal, boing. Now the place just reeks of beef madras. Boing, boing, boing. And the lonely bell was ringing. High above the Khyber Pass. <laughs> we don't want your onion budgies. You, you sure that's right? You know? <laughs> and the little congregation. Pray for guidance for their son. Boing, lead us not into temptation. There'll be no more conster. <laughs> Second verse. <laughs> what about the fella had the plastic hip and asked the surgeon, cut him with the bone for the dog? <laughs> That's right, eh? The way I tell him, isn't it? I'm, I'm too bloody good for this dump, you know. I should be... <laughs> Boing. This is the sad part. Keep it low. Then one day, Boing. Jimmy was cleaning the chimney. Boing. And he developed a smoker's cough. And Jimmy was buried on the Tuesday morning. Because the grave diggers had the Monday off. <laughs> Pretty good comedian, aren't they? <laughs> All his pals are gathered in the bookies. <laughs> to say farewell to Jim and share their grief. <laughs> and the bookie said 20 to 1 he'd go to heaven. <laughs> but 6 to 4 he'd go to Tenerife. <laughs> The lonely bell was ringing. Pray for Jimmy and his soul. He'd be coming back to see us. He's out six weeks on the dole. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the Palladium. <laughs> From the balcony to the stalls. <laughs> As you leave for an orderly queue, <laughs> there's a free takeaway for you. <laughs> It's a bag of king prawn balls. 
King Prawn, King Prawn, boy! <laughs> in great form there. We're going to take the break. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Thank you, Alan. Four laughs after the break with Russ Abbott, Helen and Hall and Tom Jones. With a taste as famous as ours, Heinz really is. Super Troopers. Soup up today. Like good old Heinz chicken soup, just one of the much loved soups in a range that's always made Heinz Britain's favourite. Super grand. God really does look nice. Heinz chicken soup. There's an effective solution that quickly gets you back to normal service. Double action indigestion remedies made by Boots. Ah, oh, that's better. When you're feeling out of order, turn to Boots Medicines. Who said the art of being a good guest is knowing when to leave? The game of quotations. It makes you say the funniest things. You are so Can't you see? Sandyman Port, improving relations since 1790. It's Christmas time in the Texas Bargain Hunt 87. This Viceroy workbench is incredible value at just 19.99. And this Bosch electronic hammer drill with a free cable wheel is only 54.95. Merry Christmas from the Texas Bargain Hunt 87. Welcome back to this marvellous Palladium Theatre. And here's more cards I've received. One from British Telecom. This is good. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. We'll come and fix your telephone after New Year's Day. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, lads. You know, um, so true. You know, the Palladium Theatre has seen many great comedians. And here's a man who's provided a great deal of laughter. I think he's superb. But you're welcome. The great talent of Russ Abbott. <laughs> well, it's nice to see you, Willie. You shouldn't have been. <laughs> ah. See you, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> see you, Jimmy. I don't know what I was going to do. Jimmy, he was so couldn't get a jelly piece. I want to get a green. You see the game, Margaret? Game dog. Grace was jumping about. I was going to do it. I said, and he missed. Uh, Dumbarton two, Dick Barton three. Uh, <laughs> see that? What is this? Shall it? This is my caber. I toss it in the air. Do me a favour, you couldn't toss salad. <laughs> I'm sure. I can eat three shredded wheat. Really? <laughs> but I thought you Scots guys were like, you know, like your porridge. Oh, that's true. I mean, I love my oats. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what the heck is this? It's a caber. A caber? It's a tree. Is it? 
Oh. Oh, come and stand in the shade, then. I mean, this is most probably... <laughs> this must have blown down in someone's back gut. Hello? <laughs> you know... <laughs> 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 I wonder where it got you, dear. Who are they? Bruce, if you've lost it, we've got it here now. <laughs> He won't play golf with you again, right? <laughs> See that, Jimmy? Now, what is this, Jimmy? That's my first love. The initials are carved in the tree there. My first love. Now, isn't that a lovely touch? L-S-D-G. L-S-D-G. first love. What exactly does that mean? Large scotch and dry ginger. <laughs> Large scotch and... Bells! My favourite sound. Bells? Aye. Uh... Phone call for Jimmy! Oh. Phone call for Excuse Jimmy! Excuse me, Jimmy. Hold Certainly. on, I'll take this call. No problem. I'll just take this phone call. We'll All be right. a second. It's handy, isn't it? Hello? It's no... Oh, I see. Right, right. Just hold on. It's no for me, Jimmy. It's for you, Jimmy. For me? Aye, for you, it's Jimmy. It's a live show, for God's sake. Will you watch this, please? Aye, sure. Thanks, Jimmy. Look after Jimmy. it. Here you go. Thanks right. very much indeed. You take the call. I'll look after the tree. Right. Hello? Who is it? Hello? <laughs> it's always been our policy during the Palladium series to bring you some culture and the very, very best in music. But right now, folks, it's my pleasure to introduce from the world's greatest opera singers from the Opera House, Milan. Signor Rossino Abozzo and Dame Isabella Embargo. Grazie, grazie, grazie. Grazie, grazie. Oh, oh grazie, grazie. It gives me great pleasure. But first... <laughs> you don't know what I have to go through. <laughs> but first, I'd like to say how happy we are that we're here tonight at the famous Palladium London Theatre. Allow me to introduce my fellow artist, Dame Isabella Embergo. <laughs> oh, thank you, grazie. <laughs> or as the song goes, there is nothing like a dame. <laughs> she is certainly nothing like a dame. <laughs> now, what are we going to sing for the ladies and gentlemen? Well, I have a big alia. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> No, her, I knew when she was a caterpillar. <laughs> the people are waiting for us to sing something. Can we sing the duet? No, no, we shall sing together. <laughs> Here's a song I always sing in the bath. Don't you mean the car wash? Shut up at the face. <laughs> it is a song from our latest series, Miami Twice. It goes a little like this. Nice look, this. <clears throat> They say we're young and we don't know Won't find out until we grow Well, you know, baby, if that's true Cause you've got me and, baby, I've got you I've got you, baby I've got you, baby They say our love won't pay the rent before it's time, our money's always spent. I guess that means that we won't have a lot. Least I'm sure of all the things we've got. I've got you, baby. I've got you, baby. I got flowers in the spring. I got you. 
you, Ross Abbott. When you do a live show at the Palladium, you're never quite sure what's going to happen next or who's going to drop in. Toby or not Toby? <laughs> that is the question. Oh, really? Well, look, lads, uh, do you mind not interrupting? I'm trying to do a job of work. Oi! It's difficult to talk without a tongue. <laughs> Especially where I'm going to put it. <laughs> Who are you, anyway? We are... The management. We manage things. And I've managed to find out a few things about you, Tarba. You see? I've had a tip-off. Really? Did you have it done private? <laughs> Are you being funny? Cos if you are, it'd make a pleasant change. <laughs> oh, now, just a minute here, boys. Steady down. Let's have a bit of respect, eh? I've been in the business this a long time. Twenty years ago, I compared this show, and I'm telling you, I'm here doing exactly the same Jokes. Thing. Job. <laughs> I know all about your career, Tar, but my granny used to watch you. Oh. <laughs> when she was a kid. Oh. <laughs> Let's face it, you were very big in the 60s. True. And now you're just very big. <laughs> and we're very big fans of yours, oh, really. Thank you. In fact, as a tribute to you, I've got a little ditty. Have you? <laughs> it's a poem. What well, me and Ron have writ. And it goes something like this. Lovely. He's Jimmy. He's Jimmy. He's chubby. Not slimmy. He's played in the largest of alls. He brings comic relief through a gap in his teeth. All together now, and yes, that's the line. That's enough of that. The next line's definitely been cut. Now mind, Jim. Ronnie has got something specially like to say to you. Well, that's nice. Shove off. <laughs> For goodness sake, man. What's the matter with your seat? Football down? hooligans, get out of here. Listen. I hate the dark, I hate the dark. Shut up, for goodness sake. Sit down there in front. God bless it, it's cannon and ball, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Once again, I thank you. Get out of my seat. Get your seat, man. Oh, sorry about this, Tom. Get out oh, of my God. seat, you're in Shut my... up, it's not your seat. The show's been started ages. We should... Sorry about this, pal. Honest. Get, get on with the show. Get on with the show, lad. Right? You're all right. Get Sorry, on with Bruce, it. Bruce. 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 <laughs> Bruce. Sit. Sorry. I'm sorry. All right. All right. We won't yourself. upset. Just enjoy yourself. We won't laugh. I promise you that. <laughs> We've just come for a quiet night. I see. We're not watching the show. That's all. So, take a seat. You're welcome. I'm you telling you, but she won't get out of it. For God's sake, man. Goodness sake, this is no good. Sit down there in front of something, will you? I will do. It's all out of the it's way. It's a live show here, you know. Please. How are you, Jimmy? I'm all right. All right. Good. Right. I haven't got a seat, Jim. All right, all right. Hang on. She's Hang in on. my seat. Get out of my seat. <laughs> well, sorry, Jim. Let's go up there, shall we? Well, okay, would you right? like Tommy? Come on up here, Thank please. You. Sorry about that. All the chocolates. <laughs> and don't pinch the coffee creams. I know they do. Leave the woman alone. You dirty lady, what you did? Come on up here, boys. Come on up. Have a look round the Palladium, lads. I am sorry. Hey, man. just in case. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yep. Two friends from way back. Cannon and Ball here, of course. Very much so for the Christmas season in the pantomime. Well, when we came to the first of the series of the live shows from the Palladium, we looked for a superstar and one of our own. And there's a young man who unfortunately isn't over with us a great deal. But when he is, we grabbed him with both hands. You saw him a couple of weeks back on the Royal Show. But it really was a big thrill and a pleasure to welcome back the great Tom Jones. There's a little drop of Tattinger Blanc de Blanc coming out of there. <laughs> well, as you should know, it was at you and us who were drinking it this morning. Yes, <laughs> well, it was anyway, it's lovely to have you home, isn't it, folks?
Here, Tom. We've all come. Is it Pontypridd you were from? That's right, Pontypridd. Pontypridd. I, well, I am sorry, you That's see. Right. And I know you were. Because you're leaking, you see. I know. <laughs> We've all come from Pontypridd to see our Tommy. The whole village. Isn't that nice? Mm. We've jumped in the Robin Reliant and... <laughs> Turbo and... <laughs> Jackknifed on the M4, but we're all all right. We had a phone call. Big Elsie from Bradford. Oh, really? <laughs> How's she doing, Joyce? <laughs> she said, the boy's 20, and could you send a few quid? But I don't know. <laughs> but I just thought you'd like to hear a bit of rock and roll tonight. Would you like that, folks? Alan, can we play a little bit? Oh, I like this one. Tom Jones. Well, it's been a pleasure having Tom back on the show, but it's been a pleasure for me to be here at this wonderful Palladium Theatre. Without a doubt, the most famous variety theatre in the whole wide world. Thanks for watching tonight. Have a real super Christmas, a very peaceful New Year, and from all of us here at London Weekend Television, good night and God bless you. Thank you, Alan. Good night. someone like that. The men who assaulted my daughter didn't stop there. They also raped her. It was him. He was the first. She's lying! A story of lust, lies and injustice, blood and orchids. A best-selling miniseries starts this Tuesday and concludes this Wednesday at 9 on ITV. And next tonight, Robert Morley stars in The Party, a tale of the unexpected. week of great new Christmas giveaway! The Sun's 12 Days of Christmas! Spot a page three girl to win a thousand pounds! Play Spot the Difference to win five thousand pounds! Win a romantic holiday in Portugal! With me! Win sensational skiing holidays! They're free! The 12 Days of Christmas in the Sun! Win 50 Christmas hampers! Win a whopping turkey! Winter Undy Land, win Racy Laces, win Hamley's Toys, win Raleigh Bikes, and win this fantastic festive Ford Fiesta. It's the 12 days of Christmas in the sun. It's going to be the happiest Christmas in the sun ever. Paco Rabanne for men. Romantic. Exciting. Original. Timeless. Unforgettable.
Paco Rabanne, what is remembered is up to you. The Gift of Music from Casio. Squirt, squirt, squirt. That's a hat trick. Anchor Real Dairy Cream, perfect for Christmas. Introducing the Remington Microscreen Ultimate with the exclusive beard lifter that gets whiskers other shavers leave behind. And like all Remington Microscreen shavers, the first screen shaves incredibly close, the second even closer. The new Remington Ultimate shaves as close as a blade and closer than any other electric shaver or your money back. Test prove it. Don't throw away your favorite clothes because they look worn. Wait. Save them with the Remington Fuzz Away. It safely removes pills and fuzz. The Remington Fuzz Away. Both these men have been Christmas shopping. This man bought a warm jumper and a silky negligee set. <laughs> this colorful stationery, bubble bath and salts, a spice rack, writing set, this Explorer 12, and this rather stylish bear. And unlike his friend, he got everything in one store. So now he's through, as is his friend. Day 92, and everyone is pulling their weight. What a happy lot we are. Them with their pale and watery memories of home, me with my very own bottle of rich, mature Ember cream. I can't watch. Where's Carruthers? Gone out. Oh dear, missed the Ember cream. Yes. Thanks, Reggie, old man. Remember the Ember this December. A bit nippy out there. Terry's famous chocolate orange. Smooth milk or plain chocolate with real oil of orange. How safe is yours? Hello? Hello, love. Listen, I think I've got a cold. We'd better forget tonight. Sorry, I've probably given you mine. I was, I was about, about to... <laughs> about to take a beach of... Me too. Listen, I'll call you. All right. Bye-bye. How are you feeling? Oh, much better now. At the first sign of a cold, take Beecham's powders or Beecham's powders capsules and feel better, fast. New drama, North and South, book two. From next Sunday, the saga continues. Oh my God, the whole world's gone insane, George. I know you want me. I want you more than any woman I've ever known. Your wife is from South Carolina? That's right. You're a damn rebel lover. This will be a people's war. Oh, get out of here, Billy, before I have to kill you. Brother against brother. Friendship split by war. North and South Book 2 starts next Sunday, 7.15, continues Monday and Tuesday. This is LWT. Now, another of those tales of the unexpected.